In recent years, the oppression of a minority group in China has come to light on mainstream media, drawing international condemnation by numerous countries. Today, we are going to look at the brief history of the Uyghurs and what caused this modern-day holocaust to occur. Our story starts here in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region in northwest China. Xinjiang is home to the Uyghurs, a Turkic-speaking minority group whose roots stem from Central and East Asia. An estimated 80% of Xinjiang's Uyghurs live in the Tarim Basin. The remaining population lives in Urumqi, the capital city of Xinjiang, and in other countries across the world, most notably Turkey. The Uyghur have traditionally been an Islamic community since the 10th century. The Uyghurs have staged several uprisings to gain independence from the newly formed Republic of China, forming the ill-fated independent communist states of the first East Turkestan Republic and the second East Turkestan Republic with the help of USSR leader Joseph Stalin. On October 1, 1949, the PRC, short for People's Republic of China, was formed with the infamous Mao Zedong as its chairman. The Second East Turkestan Republic was annexed by the People's Republic of China's rule and rebranded as the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. The PRC recognized the Uyghurs as a regional minority and not as an indigenous minority, which inevitably led to arguments over who Xinjiang belonged to, the Uyghurs or the Han Chinese. The first sign of unrest between the Uyghurs and Han Chinese was the Xiaoguan incident. It was an all-out brawl between Han Chinese workers and Uyghur workers at the largest toy factory in the world. The incident occurred due to false allegations of sexual offence by Uyghur workers on a Han Chinese woman. The repercussions of the Xiaoguan incident resulted in the July 2009 Urumqi riots. The riots started as peaceful protests which then descended into violence with the cause being unclear. The victims were mostly Han Chinese, an estimated 197 fatalities were confirmed from both sides. When the riots began, all communication with Xinjiang was cut off. In the weeks that followed, official sources reported that over 1,000 Uyghurs were arrested and detained, and Uyghur-run mosques were temporarily closed. By November 2009, over 400 individuals faced criminal charges for their actions during the riots. Nine were executed, and by February 2010, at least 26 had received death sentences. In 2012, Xi Jinping was elected as the leader of the Chinese Communist Party. Following his posting, several high-profile acts occurred, including a suicide bombing in Tiananmen Square, a train station stabbing, and the bombing of a market in Urumqi. All these crimes were reported by mainstream media to be attributed to Uyghur militants. In Xi's eyes, this was the last straw. Xi was slow and deliberate in how he dealt with the Uyghurs. Since 2014, the Xinjiang government has contracted the construction of so-called re-education camps under a program called the People's War on Terror. The initiative supposedly aimed to stop religious extremism. In reality, this was a facade the government employed to freely and forcefully arrest Uyghurs from their homes and incarcerate them at concentration camps. The reasons cited for arrests are vague, varying from religious extremism to none at all. The people in the concentration camps are brainwashed, tortured and threatened every day. Multiple videos regarding the horrors taking place in these camps have spread through social media circles. The Uyghurs are forced to learn Mandarin, shout slogans glorifying the Chinese Communist Party, forced to dance, undergo forced labor, drink alcohol and eat pork. There are also witnesses testifying to the forced sterilization, contraception and harvesting of organs. Failure to comply with the authorities results in appalling punishments. It doesn't stop in the concentration camps. Photographs from various sources show the extent to which the government pries into the information of the prisoners. Every minute personal detail, including relatives in foreign countries and their movements, where the children study and their character are all mentioned in these lists, along with a recommended course of action. The Uyghurs aren't allowed to name children to their liking, aren't allowed to wear headscarves, and the women are forced to marry Han Chinese. The oppression doesn't stop with adults. Due to the mass incarceration of the Uyghurs, there are a large number of orphaned children in Xinjiang, 
these Uyghur children are sent to live in kindergartens where the government systematically erases their Uyghur identity, turning them into Han Chinese. The children are forced to stay in these kindergartens with no escape in sight. The sole purpose of these concentration camps and kindergartens is to erase the ethnic identity of the Uyghurs and their religion in the hopes of unifying China by transforming them into Han Chinese. The ideologies of the Chinese government are being forcefully instilled into the minds of the people. Some sources say that Xi's Belt and Road Initiative may also be a factor. These concentration camps have caused China to receive worldwide condemnation. China defends its case, calling the camps vocational training centers. Numerous countries have called the initiative the Uyghur Holocaust and a blatant disregard for human rights. Various MNCs have called for a boycott of Chinese products as they use the incarcerated Uyghurs for free labor. The situation has been brought to the attention of the United Nations and the International Court of Justice. Unfortunately, the atrocities are not unanimously condemned. At the 44th session of the UN Human Rights Council, 46 countries submitted a letter of approval and the appreciation for the Chinese government's steps to eradicate terrorism and radicalization, including Muslim-majority countries such as Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Bahrain, Yemen, and even Palestine. It is important to note that these countries have important economic relations with China. It is also key to understand that the letter was signed by the government and not its people. At present, there seems to be no end in sight to the oppression and ethnic genocide of the Uyghur people. The actions of radical elements in the Uyghur community has led to the atrocities that normal Uyghur civilians face today. There is not enough awareness being made in mainstream media regarding the second holocaust and it looks like freedom is a fleeting dream for the Uyghurs.